Hello, everyone. Um, just to let you know, hopefully you can hear me that, uh, well, you can see uh, board member Blair is under Jared Bates's name uh, using his login credentials. And I believe uh, President Belknap, you are as well um, under Jared Bates's name as, as well. So just to make that, that clear, but it looks like your videos are on. So I see you now. All right, we ready? How many do we have? I believe you have four. The four available ones, we're good for that. So let's see, who is it? Susan, Nancy, Jeremy, and myself, correct? Or sure. members of the board? Okay. Yep, that's right. I know that uh, Joyce had a conflict and I didn't hear from the other two, but let's let's go forward. Representative, that's all right. Let's, uh, who would you like to have lead this discussion, JM? Yep, uh, Dan will we'll take the lead on this discussion. And first of all, thank you all for joining on the short notice. Uh, we just have a summer learning opportunity uh, that we want to be able to capitalize on. Time is of the essence uh, in order these materials. As you can imagine, uh, many states are similarly faced as us uh, with us. If we were to have waited, then that we would have run the risk of of uh, having a back order and not receiving our summer summer learning materials until. Um, after perhaps summer was even over. So uh, thank you for the board president for calling this and board members and staff for, for joining. Uh, JM, turn the time over to you to walk us through and share your screen. Uh, there were a few questions that came from, while well, she's doing that, a few questions that came from board members uh, regarding this program and she's prepared uh, to address those uh, in the presentation. Of course, it's a conversation and dialogue. If you have questions as she goes along, feel free to ask or seek clarification. Rich, can you see my screen, the PowerPoint? No, I see you at the moment, so. Okay, let me try again, hold on. Oh, I know why, sorry. Oh, you're good. Now, can you see it? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. I, and I, I want to just reiterate what um, Rich had said. I just want to take this opportunity. Thank you so much for allowing us to present this. Um, we were initially going to do it on a smaller scale, but since COVID-19 hit, um, when we met with Chad and Adam and our leadership, we really felt it important to reach all of our students with this. So I want to answer a lot of the questions that came up regarding our proposal for scholastic literacy packs. The essential question that first arose was, is literacy camp the same thing as the scholastic grab and go literacy packs? Actually, the, the literacy packs are a brand new tool that, that Scholastic has created for families to utilize during the summer to strengthen the connection between literacy and children's well-being. And the packs, as it said in the, in the synopsis, are either a three book pack or a five book pack. And then they have a parent guide and some tools in them that can either be in English or in Spanish. And um, it's meant for some really fun learning um, activities for the kids throughout the whole summer. Then what the Literacy Camp is a specific program that we will be integrating with the books, specific books from the PACs into that program as well. So our students will have an opportunity. All the students K through eight will have the opportunity to receive a literacy pack. And then they can also, and it's free, the kids get to keep the books and all the contents within, and then they can also sign up for week-long sessions that entail the literacy camp that have, it's, a, it's its own program, but can also integrate these books into the learning. So one of the first question that arose from one of our board members is, if you want to read that, in the past, when have we used lit camp? What, what time of year, grades, that type of thing? 
we purchased Lit Camp and Lit League or Literacy Camp and Literacy League a year ago for for the very first time to be utilized during last year's summer learning and after school during our literacy um, events in our extended day learning. And that was um, approved in the board synopsis from last April 18th, last year. And just a quick note, we held a successful lit camp that we also combined with uh, fitness for fourth through eighth graders during this past summer school. And it had a slow start. It only started with six, but it didn't take very long for it to grow to 56 students for a small period of time. And so uh, the feedback we got, especially from our junior high kids and our older elementary kids that they really love the, the um, literacy camp component. Question number two, um, I want at any time, I think I'll pause after each slide to see if there's additional questions. There was I think a total of nine questions that we'll go through. So does anyone have a question so far? Don does not. I'm sorry? I do not. Okay, so please just stop me if you have a question. Are all of our teachers familiar with this? Actually, we have some a few of our after school staff at our intergenerational poverty sites that are familiar with it because they've utilized it the most. And actually last year when we did Lit Camp, we utilized staff assistants to uh, teach that instead of the teachers. That's one change that we'll be making this year is we want to take that up a, a notch and have our certified teachers run those classes. And the training is actually very simple and easy. A scholastic personnel does it virtually and it doesn't take much time at all. And we do have funding set aside for that. It's Title IV funding. It's already been designated for that and already planned out. Because we were planning to strengthen our lit camp opportunities this summer, um, and we were already planning for this. We've just scaled it much larger due to COVID-19. The third question was, what does the, the learning experience look like for our students? So our summer lit camp will be offered June 1st through June July 16th, one to two hour daily sessions, depending upon the grade. And each week they'll fo focus on a unique social emotional learning. And that's one of the reasons why our district really embraced the Lit Camp program is it ties academic literacy with social emotional learning. And that is the best way to help our students with their summer learning. Is it a one-to-one -one ratio or is it pre sorry pre-recorded we are planning on having 15 students assigned to each grade specific literacy camp virtual classroom and the virtual instruction will be a hybrid of face-to-face -face virtually and pre-recorded and as of all of our virtual learning since COVID-19 happened we are following all of our approved OSD virtual learning guidelines to provide that instruction. Is the lit camp being provided by Scholastic or the students teachers? That's the one element that we um, are changing for this year. It will be our, our Ogden School District um, licensed teachers, specific grade level teachers. We put a posting out and they, it's anyone that's interested in teaching this and having providing this learning opportunity in the summer, they sign up. And so it may be as a teacher of a specific student, it may not be, but they'll all be licensed teachers with staff assistants supporting them. We team up with our student advocacy team and we have a lot of support uh, personnel that will help our teachers during this process as well. Any questions so far? Okay, these are physical books, not ebooks, correct? Um, and is there an ebook option? What is so powerful about this is that these are physical books that the kids get to have in their possession and keep. They'll also, um, part of their uh, grab and go packs are the thinking sheets. They'll be doing some projects, writing opportunities that align to these books. And then we align and integrate that into our Lit Camp extended enhanced learning experience. Teachers and students will have small group virtual discussions using the books they read. 
There's also a free online library and supplemental materials that we will utilize in our virtual experience as necessary and as needed. Have we reviewed the learning material and would it be possible to see example? We have used Lit Camp and Lit Lee curriculums during our 2019 summer and our extended day learning. Adam at Mickel and our OSD curriculum team have vetted this curriculum. Adam, do you want to jump in at that at, at this point to mention anything about that? I think at a high level, Jam, you spoke to it. Um, just like any other curriculum, we go through with our team of specialists to make sure it meets certain criteria given the circumstances. Especially, we wanted to appreciate the context and meeting our students' needs at a distance. And it, it did meet, like many other curriculum, it, it did meet all the criteria we would look for, um, especially given the circumstances. Thank you, Adam. And then students nationwide have increased their reading levels one to three grade levels after part participating in summer lit camp. Um, Carrie, do you want to add anything to that? JM and I had the honor to attend Scholastic Summit and present Lit Camp because we had such great um, response to it. The children love the learning. And we saw the data from other programs across the nation and heard their experiences. And we got very excited about it because we value all the instruction that we've provided, but this gives that additional social emotional learning and that emotion part and that connection with that teacher. Last summer, um, Julianne Rivera led those discussions with the kids. And I think this is a great opportunity to have those types of wonderful discussions with kids virtually. And to keep in mind, we're integrating Summer Lit Camp with the Grab and Go Packs. And that's what's really exciting is that our kids every child k through eight will have that opportunity to either have three or five scholastic books and a, a guide of some activities to do with their families in addition to the opportunity to enha have enhanced virtual classroom learning with these books and so to show you i hopefully the link will work yes it did. okay this is an actual sample of one of the lit guides okay so it come, this is second grade. I can't duplicate it, okay? And it has table of contents. So you've got a welcome letter, why literacy matters, second grade milestones. You can read those items right there. And they come in both English and Spanish and we're buying actually extra Spanish guides. So then we can send home an English version and a Spanish guide with it for some of our families. So they have both the English and the Spanish for some of our families who um, that goes a long way with giving them that both of those options and it's very respectful to them. So there's a letter to them. And I will share this with you so you can look at this more in depthly. It kind of tells them about why literacy matters. Um, I don't want to go too fast, but take a ton of time either. It's top seven ways you can support your child's literacy. Um, what's really fun is the next sections that are coming up, there's little milestones that tells them how to break down words, talking about text, things they can do. But if we scroll down a little bit further, um, and how to become strong readers and writers and text, there's some little ideas that are coming up right here. Literacy throughout the home. Gives you idea in the living room, things that you can do there to see literacy and to have that opportunity. In the kitchen, um, like reading cookbooks to plan a meal, write shopping lists and unpack and sort groceries while putting them away. Describe kitchen tools, something that doesn't take money. It's just things that parents don't, don't necessarily think of. And those are several pages of different places in the homes that they can do those things. And then they give you some ideas of fun activities about playing charades, making real knife collections. Um, 
and a lot of things were there. And I'll just share this with you so you can go in more in depth a little bit later. Um, it just gives some nice ideas. Make puppets, create a family journal that doesn't take any money. Dance with your child as you read books together, encouraging movement as a response. Play some fun word games and then even help them watch television wisely. Okay, uh, and then go back to here. Um, and then is the money. Now, if you look at, if you refer back to the board synopsis, we are, are requesting $110,536. We thought initially plus shipping, we're still hearing that they may not charge us that extra, so that would be good. But the question is, is the money already budgeted to be spent this year? Yes. Is the money coming from multiple accounts? Yes. Gear Up will pay for the eighth grade portion. Title I from our district set aside will pay for 90%, and the remaining 10% will come from Title VI. Now, we had already planned on, we already plan on using a, a portion of our title money for summer school learning, a portion of the Title VI for the summer school learning, especially targeting our migrant and our Title VI families. And that is, completely how we intended to spend it was helping them get books in their hands and reaching out with following up with them about that learning um and so what other summer oh and i just wanted to add just a special note just in busing costs for summer school for the months of june and july last year and what it was fifty thousand one hundred and thirty six dollars and um Crossing guard costs was almost 3000 So that's already half of this, that what we would have put just in transportation costs to get kids into our schools to participate in the learning, half of that is already um, accounted for in this. And so it's actually a lot less expensive to do it this way. And we reach a lot more students. Then there's one other question, an essential question that arose. What other summer learning opportunities will be provided? We have week-long targeted math skill boot camp virtual classroom sessions for grades fifth through six. Two week-long and if you have any questions there, um, Adam, do you want to highlight that just a little bit? Because that is something that you're offering. Sure, and I, I can't get in too far in the weeds right now yet, uh, JM, as we're we're working with our specialists to develop this. So I'll stay in that conceptual space, but we are looking at what we know and we can right now, um, not knowing when we'll have access to be able to provide meaningful face-to-face -face interactions with our students. Uh, we want to focus our efforts right now in providing what we, we do know that we can create high quality uh, virtual experiences. So considering what we are going to need to prepare our students uh, for next year, knowing that there is going to be some significant impact from the dismissal, uh, we wanted to make a more comprehensive offering over the summer. Um, not that we haven't uh, attempted to do some significant work over the summer in the past with summer school, but we certainly wanna to try to make a, a broader stroke here and meet, meet more students where we may have struggles uh, with some students who wouldn't have struggled in the past. So our, our first uh, offering is we're working at this kind of boot camp where we would target in on the essential standards for those particular grades and structure the summer so it would be clear week to week which standards we were targeting in a boot camp style to really focus on readiness as the students transition to the next grade because regardless of their struggle right now, um, they are transitioning to the next grade and we want to do our best before they come back in August to provide opportunity to get them ready. So our specialist will be looking at uh, those key essentials, uh, structuring week to week, and then students will be able to enroll in spaces that meet their needs. We've had some that have thrived in online spaces. I don't want to deny that. They've been very successful in these digital spaces and we've had others who have not. They can work with their parents to look at the schedule ahead of them and decide where, um, which areas they feel like they have a deficit and then enroll in the areas of need. Instead of having to enroll in the, the complete summer program, some may choose to do that, but others can enroll in certain weeks or cer certain two week sessions um, to prepare them for next year. Thank you, Adam. And then 
two years ago, we started and we revamped our summer learning for our secondary students for math instruction, because when we looked at the data, having our secondary math students try to recoup credit in math using Odysseyware was not productive to the point where there would be less than 0.25 credit recouped. So we went to live face-to-face -face reteaching in math, and that's produced great success for the last two years of um, students recouping math credit and understanding math learning. And so we are taking that concept and taking it virtual for this summer. Um, Janine Montgomery and her team uh, uh, of teachers that have been doing this for two years, they're very, um, they're experts in this and we're going to all in the instruction of math and we're going to hire some of our teachers that are just absolutely skilled in technology, combine them together so we can have a very meaningful virtual classroom learning experience for our uh, seventh through 12th grade students in math and also include uh, that, that, that has like about 15 kids per class in there, but then smaller numbers of, of a virtual lab portions in which they'll get additional help with math. And then speaking with our high school principals, oh, I'm sorry, speaking with our high school principals, they are going to enhance what they have normally done during summer school with Odysseyware to bring the live teaching element with their teachers and virtual classrooms, small group tutoring, um, as much as they possibly can. Uh, ben Loman has seen some big success with that with a small group tutoring classrooms. And so we're going to build upon that so we can, our, especially our students that are getting earning eyes right now or in, which are incompletes, that we can get them caught up and our seniors make sure we get as many of them as graduated and catch up as many of our juniors so they're not deficit for next year. So that's what we've got on the plan for right now for summer school. And what we're asking for you today is to purchase those to go literacy packs. So at least at a minimum for our K through eight grade students, regardless if the family sign up for a virtual learning experience, they can get three to five. And some of our students, we're even gonna put a few more books in for our ELs and our newcomers and our Title VI kids, put some additional culturally diverse books in there and dual language books like our DLI classes, we're going to put in those packs an additional book that's actually written in two languages, English and Spanish. So it's an opportunity for our students to have some new fun learning in the summer with these literacy packs. And that's why our, our, our scholastic representative said we really need to have them ordered at the latest by Wednesday this week to even get a chance to get them. And that's our presentation. Is there any other questions? I don't have any. Hey, um, what's the difference or what's who gets the three book pack and who gets the five book pack? Oh, that's a that's a great question. We are focusing on our students because normally with summer school funds, we need to target our second language learners, our migrant students, our Title VI, and our newcomer students. And so we're gonna target them with five book packs, but then we also, um, Stacia from Adam's team is identifying all of our elementary students that are below benchmark with Dibbles and Acadians, and they're gonna get the five pack as well. And then we're also going to target our, our students with IEPs to have the, make sure that they get the five packs. And then if we have enough five packs, We'd like to also offer five packs to our more advanced learners as well. Oh, and I forgot to mention DLI students will get the five packs. Any Did that answer your question? Jam. Uh -huh. Hi. Hi. Uh, I, I was just wondering, Will there be a grade attached to the Scholastic Literary Packs? Yes, they are by grade. Well, I, will the students be graded for oh, their work? No, no, we don't. 
Okay. Well, okay. Now let me step back. For the literacy packs, no. The lit camp, it's fun summer learning. The uh -huh. math, when we're giving credits for the secondary, there is okay. credit issues. Okay. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. And for the credits that the high schools will be offering for the 9th through 12th, that is a credit. But not for the literacy camp. That's just fun learning. This is exciting. Uh, any more questions from Susan, Jeremy, Nancy? Sounds like a great opportunity. Okay. So, Jay, are we ready for a motion? I would love if you guys would approve the purchase of all of our lit packs for K through 8. So, as JM just stated, may I have a motion from either Susan, Jeremy, or Nancy? So move. Nancy. Who said so move? Nancy. Nancy, is there a second? I'll, I'll second. Say. Susan, second. So for those four board members who are forming the quorum this evening, please give a name and a voice vote. Don says yes. Nancy says yes. Susan says yes. Jeremy, aye. Thanks, Jeremy. All right. So that uh, concludes our business for this meeting on Monday. It's not quite as short as I thought we would be. We were trying to hope for the Weaver School District uh, board meeting. The one time they were bragging, they had one in seven minutes. Oh. And I thought, <laughs> why did you even waste your time coming? So we're grateful to, to be here. And thank you, JM and Adam and Carrie and uh, the others who were part of your team bring this to us this evening. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And, Any, and we'll get those ordered tomorrow morning. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Well, this will be end of the meeting. Have a good evening.